Getting an overview of the configuration process. Armin Sharyarian. Getting an overview of the configuration process. When you start with a freshly installed server, it isn't configured to do much of anything. You'll need to take some basic configuration steps. Some of these steps are the basics like setting the day and time, others are tasks that will allow you to manage your systems remotely. Here's the basic process. Activate Windows Server 2022. Set the date, time, and time zone. Change the computer name. Add to the domain, if there is one to join. Configure the networking. Configure the server to receive Windows updates. Add roles and features. Set up the Windows Server OS for remote administration. Configure the Windows Server Firewall. You can find the specifics on how to do each of these tasks in the following section. Providing computer information. When you're deploying new servers, you have to perform certain tasks, such as activating the operating system with a valid Microsoft product key, setting the time zone, changing the name, and adding the server to the domain. In this SEC session, I explain how to provide information for the server on both Windows Server 2022 with desktop experience and Server 2022 Core. Windows Server 2022 with desktop experience. Many system administrators got their start with the graphical user interface, GUI of a Windows Server operating system. Windows Server 2022 continues the tradition of the GUI with the desktop experience installation. Let's take a look at what is involved with configuring Windows Server 2022 with desktop experience. Activation One of the first things that you do after installing the Windows Server operating System is activated with a valid product key. You can do this through the desktop interface or through PowerShell. In this section, I cover activating through the desktop interface. I cover activation through PowerShell in the later section on activation for server core. 1. Login to the server. Server manager opens automatically. 2. In Server Manager, click Local Server in the Navigation pane. 3. To start the activation process, click the Not Activated hyperlink next to Product ID. A dialog box launches automatically asking for the product key. 4. Enter your product key and click Next. You're prompted to activate Windows. 5. Click Activate. You get a confirmation that Windows has been activated. 6. Click Close. You're left on the activation screen shown in Figure 4 to 1, where you see that your version of Windows is now activated. Figure 4 to 1. The activation screen showing that Windows Server 2022 is activated. Time Zone. Setting the time zone is a common task in the server provisioning process. You may want to set the server to the time zone that you are in, or to the same time zone as a corporate office located elsewhere. This is common if your servers are in a co-location and you want them to be on the same time zone as your local systems. One in Server Manager. Click Local Server in the left-hand menu. 2. Click the hyperlink next to Time Zone. This may already be set to the correct time zone for your area. 3. Click the Change Time Zone button. 4. Select your time zone from the drop-down list. 5. If you're in an area that uses daylight saving time, click the check box. Next to automatically adjust clock for daylight saving time. If you do not, 
Use daylight saving time, leave the box unchecked. 6. Click OK to exit the time zone settings dialog box, and then click OK. Again to exit the date and time dialog box. Computer name and domain. Setting the computer name is a must in an enterprise environment. Most organizations have a naming convention that you need to follow, but the names the organization requires will certainly be easier to remember than the default randomly generated name. Joining to the domain is one of the simpler steps, but also one of the most important steps to enable centralized authentication management and configuration capabilities. 1. In Server Manager, click Local Server in the left-hand menu. 2. Click the hyperlink next to Computer Name. This will be the default name that starts with Win and will be followed by a random string of letters and numbers. 3. Click the Change button. 4. In the Computer Name field, enter the name that you want for your server, and then click OK. A dialog box appears telling you that you need to restart the server. 5. Click OK. 6. Click the Close button in the System Properties dialog box. You're prompted to either restart now or restart later. 7. Click Restart now if you want to reboot the server immediately. Click Restart later if you want to finish other administrative tasks you may have first. If you click Restart later, you'll need to manually reboot the server when you're ready. 8. To join a domain, perform steps 1 through 3. 9. In the computer name slash domain changes dialog box, click the domain radio button, and enter the name of the domain you want to join. 10. Click OK. A dialog box appears telling you that you need to restart the server. 11. Click OK. 12. Click the Close button in the System Properties dialog box. 13. Click Restart now or Restart later. After the restart, the server will be joined to the domain. Configure Networking. Your server will use a dynamically assigned IP address by default. If this is not desirable, you'll want to set a static IP address so that the server will continue to use the same address. 1. In Server Manager, click Local Server in the left-hand menu. 2. Next to Ethernet, click the hyperlink that says IPv4 address assigned by DHCP, IPv6 enabled. 3. Right-click your network adapter it should be called Ethernet, and click Properties. 4. Click Internet Protocol version 4, and then click the Properties button. By default, the server is set to obtain an IP address automatically and obtain DNS server addresses automatically. If this is what is desired, then no changes are necessary. 5. If you need to make changes, select Use the following IP address. 6. Fill in the IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway. 7. Manually enter the addresses for the preferred DNS servers. See Figure 4 to 2 for an example. 8. Click OK to close the dialog box. 9. Click OK one more time to exit out of Ethernet properties. Figure 4 to 2. The Internet Protocol version 4 properties dialog box. Windows Server 2022 Core. Many system administrators have configured a Windows Server with a GUI, but not many have used Windows Server Core. As you see in this section, Windows. Server Core has a simple interface, and when you learn how to navigate it, you may find it simpler to work with than Windows Server with desktop experience. Activation Windows Server Core gives you a few different options for activating your copy. 
of Windows Server 2022. In this section, I cover activating via config, as well as activating via PowerShell. Activating with Sconfig. Sconfig is the built-in configuration utility in Windows Server Core. It's a text-based menu that allows you to do the majority of your initial configuration tasks. All from one central location. By default, Sconfig launches automatically after you've logged in. One from the Sconfig utility. Type 11 for Windows activation and press Enter. 2. Type 3 to install your product key. 3. Enter your 25-character product key in the dialog box that pops up, and then click OK. After the key is installed, you see a message saying the key was installed successfully. 4. Close the window by clicking the red X or by pressing enter twice. 5. When you're back on the Sconfig screen, type 2 to activate Windows, and then press enter. A command prompt window launches again with the slmgr.vbs script to perform the activation. Assuming there are no errors, this will complete with no message. 6. Close the window by clicking the red X or by pressing Enter twice. Activating from PowerShell. After you've logged into Windows Server Core, you're presented with this config utility. From there, you can activate your copy of Windows to set the license and do the activation from the command line. You'll need to select menu option 15. Exit to command line, PowerShell. To activate, you have to set the key. You do this with the Windows Server License Manager script, slmgr.vbs. The slmgr.vbs script allows you to work with your Windows Server product keys in different ways depending on the parameter that you use along with it. In the Example in this book, I use both IPK and ADO. The IPK parameter is used when installing product keys, and the ADO parameter is used to specify online activation. To install the product key that will be needed for your version of Windows Server 2022, use the following command with the parameter IPK. Just replace with your 25-character license key, including the dashes. slmgr.vbs ipk you get a dialog box that tells you the product key installed successfully. Click OK. After the license key is installed, you use the same script with the ADO parameter. To do an online activation of your copy of Windows, you do that with the following. Command. slmgr.vbs ADO. If the activation was successful, you get a dialog box that says the product was activated successfully. See Figure 4 to 3. Figure 4 to 3. Using slmgr. vbs to activate. Windows Server. Time Zone. Much like activation in Windows Server Core, you can set the time zone via Sconfig or PowerShell. In this section, I cover both methods. The great thing about PowER Shell version is that it will work on Windows Server with desktop experience as well. Setting the time zone with Sconfig. Sconfig is the built-in configuration utility in Windows Server Core. Because it's a simple text-based menu, it provides a simple way for administrators to configure the time zone without needing scripting knowledge to do so. One from the Sconfig utility, type 9 to go into the settings for date and time. The date and time dialog box appears. 2. Click the Change Time Zone button. 3. Select your time zone from the drop-down list. 
4. If you are in an area that uses daylight saving time, click the check box. Next to automatically adjust clock for daylight saving time. If you do not use daylight saving time, leave the box unchecked. 5. Click OK to exit out of the time zone settings dialog box, and click OK. Once more to exit out of the date and time dialog box. Setting the time zone from PowerShell. If you prefer to work in PowerShell, you can also set the time zone from there. This utilizes the control command to call the control panel's date and time screen. In PowerShell, type the following. Set time zone ID if you aren't sure what your time zone ID is, you can run get time zone. List available to see all the time zones you can choose from. Computer name and domain. Setting the name and adding a server to a Windows domain are some of the most common activities that system administrators do with new servers. With Windows Server Core, there are two methods that you should know to complete this task, sconfig, the configuration utility in Windows Server Core, and PowerShell. Setting the computer name with sconfig. The sconfig utility in Windows Server Core makes it simple to change the name of your server with its text-driven menus. Follow these steps. 1. In the sconfig utility, type 2 to change the computer name. You're prompted to enter a new name. 2. Enter the new name, and press enter. You need to restart your computer to apply the change. 3. Type yes to reboot now or no to reboot later. Adding to a domain with sconfig. When the server has the correct name, you may want to add it to a Windows domain. You can do this with the sconfig utility as well. 1. In the sconfig utility, type 1 to change the domain. 2. Type D to join a domain and press enter. 3. Give it the name of the domain you want to join and then press enter. 4. Enter the name of an authorized user and press enter. 5. Enter the password of the user and press enter. You need to restart your computer to apply the change. 6. Click yes to reboot now or no to reboot later. Setting the computer name from PowerShell. Although Sconfig is a nice utility, you may want to be able to script the changes that you want to make. Whenever this is the case, PowerShell can be very helpful. From running batch scripts in the command prompt, to running PowerShell. Scripts in PowerShell, both methods work regardless of whether you're on Windows Server Core or Windows Server with desktop experience. 1. From this config utility, type 15 to exit to command line, PowerShell. The PowerShell window opens on your server core box. 2. Use the rename computer command to change the name of your server. Rename computer new name 3. You get a message stating that the NetBIOS name will be truncated if your name is longer than 15 characters. 4. If you receive this message, type Y and then press Enter to accept. Adding to a domain from PowerShell. The ability to script the joining of the domain is a useful skill if you're going to be deploying any quantity of servers. Not only does adding a domain via PowerShell make it simpler to do, but it also helps to ensure that there are no mistakes in the process of joining the domain. One from this config utility, type 15 to exit to command line, PowerShell. The PowerShell window opens on your server core box. 2. Use the add computer command to add the server to the domain. Here's an example. Add computer domain name your underscore domain underscore name restart. A dialog box appears asking for a username and password. 
3. Enter a username that is authorized to add systems to your active directory domain and enter the corresponding password. 4. Click OK. The server restarts. Configure networking. Before you can set the IP address for the adapter with PowerShell, you need to find out what the index of your interface is. You can do this by typing the following. Get net adapter. The output lists all network adapters. In this case, you want the one that says Ethernet. After you have the index number, you can set the IP address and the DNS. Servers. On my server, the index is 4. Use the following command to set the static IP address. Interface index is the Index number for my network card, iPad address is the IP address I want to assign. Prefix length is the subnet mask that I want to use, and default gateway is the Gateway address for the local network, see figure 4 to 4. New NetApp address interface index 4 iPad address 192.168.1.50. Prefix length 24 default gateway 192.168.1.1 I haven't discussed PowerShell much at this point, and this is a more complex bit of PowerShell. The new NetApp address is a complet that allows you to work with IP addresses on Windows Server systems. The parameters that come after Ward, like interface index, help to identify the object you want to work with. The network adapter, in this case, or to make changes to the settings, like the iPad address parameter where you specify the IP address you want to set on the network adapter. Figure 4 to 4. Setting the IP address with PowerShell. To set the DNS server after that, the command uses the same index number for my network card. Server addresses is used to identify the DNS servers that the system should use, see figure 4 to 5. If you have more than one, you can separate them with a comma. Set Dean's client server address interface index for server addresses. 8.8.8.8, 8.8.4.4, figure 4 to 5, setting the D.